Hey everybody, Barry here again. We're gonna continue on today, just as we were yesterday, doing oil pan. I ran out of sheet metal yesterday, but I found some old shelving here that got sacrificed. And it's the same thickness as this. The only difference is it's painted. It's not rusty or anything, it's in good shape. It's not warped up. So I don't feel too bad about it. I do have some other sheet metal up here that's thicker, but it came out of a 1950s, like an airport fire truck or something. So it's 60 odd years old. It's definitely porous and it's gonna weld like garbage. So I'm not gonna use that. Uh, the only spot I have to fill in now is this square spot here. And I realized after I filmed that this round piece is here for the oil pickup tube to come down through. So I'm gonna make my pan come and go around the same shape, but tapering straight at the top here. Yesterday, got this one here, this end piece welded in. Well, tacked in, shaped. The sump is tacked together. So for what it is, it's coming together pretty quick. I've never made my own oil pan before, so it's been a learning experience. And if anybody has any ideas on how to improve this, it'd be cool. Just let me know because I've made one. I might as well make 10 now. <laughs> and I've been kind of looking at making my own intake manifold out of sheet metal because why not? I made one before and I'll see if I can dig up a picture and put it in now. And it's cool looking and I never did get to use it because I was going carburetor first when I built the first LS which is like dumb because I was like, oh, I'll save money by putting a carburetor on it. Fuel injection is expensive. And then when I scrapped the chalk, I was like, wait a minute, I have all the fuel injection. I don't, I don't need to spend $800 on a carb and intake. So anyway, I made the intake, but just different design than I was looking at. I would like to make an intake that would fit this really well and use some of this sheet metal stuff here. I know it sounds kind of poverty, but I always like making stuff and you know, who cares? I like doing stuff like that anyway. But task at hand. Let's get this oil pan put together. Here's our final piece made up. I got a little bit bendy with the vise and we've got it pretty well straight at the top. What I'll do, I'll put a tack here and then tap it in at the same time. Put a couple tacks down here. Got some gaps I gotta fill in. But the best thing about doing this is after I get everything tacked, say a couple inches apart or an inch apart, I can go pull the oil pan off the block, get inside and hammer out these pieces right here. Hammering those out is not going to warp anything. I can do like a hammer attack, hammer attack, hammer attack, keep the piece kind of hot so I can hammer it out sensibly and not warp anything. And it'll pretty much go fine from there, I would imagine. Got to fill this gap in here a little bit, but as I tap or as I tack it here, I can kind of tap the pieces in and make those fit well. I think it looks okay. Gonna take a cool down break and get back in there in a couple minutes. Just a look so far, I got a couple of beads ran. Just spacing them out the best I can. Lots and lots of old slag on here. I'll clean that up later on with a buffer wheel when I'm done. Flux core is dirty, but it works. A couple more beads ran here. I'm gonna weld it inside now. What I can anyway, a couple spots I probably won't be able to get at, but I'll weld it completely outside 
and then do what I can inside. Um, this is going to take a few days because I don't want to risk warping it all and having to do it all again. So I'll just take my time here and there, have a sip of coffee, that kind of thing, and have her done in no time. I turn it over for a look. I really like it. It looks pretty cool. It obviously looks homemade, but pretty sweet. We got lots of sump, lots of room for oil in there. Also, I found an old pan and it is smaller, but not by a whole lot. Oh, that's so gross. My welds look better when there's flux on them. That's not so bad. Let's do some more welding. And we're all welded up. It doesn't look very pretty. Lots of slag on here that all grind off. And I didn't do these spots here, of course, because I can't hit them with a hammer. So when this cools down tomorrow, I'll uh, pull the pan off, get some welding done inside. Bang out those spots and weld those up. And I think right now I'm gonna go over it with a wire wheel or buffer wheel on the grinder or something just to calm it down a little bit make it look a little bit neater and then we'll finish up for tonight I know it's not that pretty and I'm not a great welder, but man, it looks cool. I really like it. Happy with how it's coming out. After I get it all welded up, I'll paint it. I think I'll probably paint it the same color as the engine because I've always done that. A lot of people do like one base color engine, different color heads or a black oil pan, whatever, but I just like having all one solid color. It's kind of different looking, but after it's cleaned up with the wire wheel or the buffer wheel, it starts to look a lot better. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, oh man, it's heavy. Yeah, that looks sharp. It looks like any fabricated oil pan I've ever seen. And here's a better view of what it looks compared to the stock oil pan. It's a little bit smaller, actually. It seems like this one is a lot deeper. While it's still square, mine is, so 
The stock one was a six quart pan, so even if mine's a five quart or something like that, maybe I'll just put an extra one in. I don't really mind. Also, something I did think about was, I think I'm gonna use like half of the windage tray. And by that, I mean, I'll find where it sits, where it goes to strike the pan, and I'll cut it off in front of it and use like potentially this much. That'll stop oil right here from sloshing up around the crank. That'll make a bit of a difference, I'm sure. But for tonight, that's all I have. I'm gonna wait till this cools down tomorrow, pull the pan off, start welding it inside, knock out those couple notchy spots that I gotta fix. And uh, then we'll hammer down again. And then I can really focus on getting the engine mounted. Gotta come up with some engine mounting plans. So we'll see what that's all about when I get there. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a great night.